All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Philip Rüdiger, and I work for Continuum Analytics. I work on the HoloViews, GeoViews, Data Shader, and Spooky projects. Um, and today I'll be talking about dashboards visualizing 1 billion data points in 30 lines of Python. OK, so what's the actual problem that we're trying to address here? So we want to make it as easy as possible to explore data sets interactively and then transition to adding widgets and deploy the whole thing as an app. Often you spend lots of effort building some exploratory analysis in the notebook, combining some domain-specific code, widget code, plotting code. And once you all have all that, you have your exploratory analysis. But it becomes really difficult to actually deploy that on a separate server. As soon as you want to change some, visualize some different aspect of your data, you have to rewrite your whole thing. And once you scale up to larger data sets, it becomes more difficult as well. Um, so before I go into those things, I actually want to show some motivating example here. Um, so this is the example we were working towards. Uh, we, here we have uh, some widgets. So for example, widget controlling the alpha level of our map. Uh, we can control the color map of our uh, visualization. We can filter our data. So this is actually a data set of New York taxi, data, uh, New York taxi trips. Um, and we have the locations. Um, for 12 million data points. Uh, the actual data set is a bit larger, and we'll actually see a larger data set a bit later. But for example, we can filter it by the number of passengers, and you can see the data up, update live. We can switch between visualizing pickups and drop-offs, and we can also zoom in interactively. And you can see as I zoom in here, it resolves and redraws the plot. Um, and this is all thanks to Data Shader. So now that we've motivated this a little bit, I'm going to switch back to this. Um, and this is actually made possible by the interplay of a pretty wide array of li um, libraries, um, which I won't go into immediately because that's maybe a bit intimidating. So we'll see in, in seven steps, we'll see how to use these libraries together and get to what we just saw. So um, we start with getting some data. We then build some prototype plots in a notebook. Um, we declare some parameters to control our visualization, uh, link those to our data, and finally, we get some widgets and deploy it as a dashboard. So we'll start by getting the data. So as I said, we, we were using the, the New York taxi data set. Uh, this is just a subset containing 12 million points. Um, it's stored in the parquet format, which you saw earlier in the Dask talk. And we'll actually load this using Dask. So here, uh, we'll load it from disk. Um, and we'll actually load it into memory. Uh, for larger data sets, we could use distributed or something to um, distribute it among a cluster. But here we'll load it and persist it to memory. Um, and as you can see, it took us about two seconds to load this, 12 million data points. And uh, it might be a bit small, but we have five columns here. We have the passenger count. We have the pickup x and y location and the drop off x and y location. OK, so now that we've loaded this data into memory, we actually want to visualize it. And we want to do so exploratory, um, in an exploratory way at first, and then graduate to something more um, stable. So for that, we'll be using HoloViews. HoloViews provides a set of simple declarative um, ways to annotate your data for, visual for visualization. And it provides a large library of elements that allow you to wrap your data, which each have an associated visual representation. HoloViews also makes it easy to compose your elements, these, these primitives together, and lay them out on the page, overlay them in different ways, and so on. And it actually has different backends to render your plots. So um, what we'll be using here is Bokeh, um, which you also saw earlier already, um, which allows us to interactively explore our plot. Um, but actually, our data is way, way, way too big to actually drop it straight into the browser. You can't just drop 12 million points into a browser. So what we'll be using is data shader to rasterize the data first. And that's what I'll be showing you now. OK, so I'll go through these steps. Here we have uh, four or five lines of code to visualize the data. First, we load the HoloViews bokeh extension, plotting extension. We wrap this, data, this data, Dask data frame we just loaded into a Holo, with a um, HoloViews set of points, um, which is in one of these primitives I talked to, element primitives I talked about. We declare that we want to visualize the pickup x and y location, and that these have an associated value with them, which is the passenger count. Um, we also declare some options about this visualization. So we declare the width and height of the plot. 
we disable the axes, we set a background, and so on. And then Holovis provides this uh, nice little operation, um, which we can apply to our points to rasterize them. Um, so we also declare it color map, for instance. And then when I run this, within one second, we get this interactive plot. Um, and already, if I zoom and pan, you, you can see it re-rasterizes the plot every time I zoom and pan um, as the range, the axis ranges change. Okay, so now um, we've visualized it, but maybe we want to actually uh, put it into context, see where, where this data is actually situated. We know it's in New York in this case, but um, maybe in other cases we don't. Um, so the Holovis has a geo, geographic extension called GeoViews, which allows us to wrap um, tile sources, bulky tile sources, very easily. And so we, we do that here. We declare a tile server that we want to uh, look at. And then we overlay um, the set of tiles with our taxi trips. And we can do this really easily using this mole operator. And if we do that, we now see our plot situated on the actual map of New York. And again, everything is interactive and smooth and quick and so on. Okay, so now we've loaded data, we've visualized it, but we want to actually declare some parameters to, to customize our visualization dynamically. And for that, we uh, use the param library. Param lets you express the t intent um, and various things about the parameters that we want to express. So for example, we can uh, declare the types of the parameters, we can apply some range checking, we can associate doc strings with our parameters, and we can declare some default values. Um, param actually has some other nice properties in that um, you can declare classes and the parameters are always inherited when you create a subclass and so on, and we'll actually see that. So let's actually declare a class with some parameters. So here we'll click create a class called the um, New York City Taxi Explorer class, um, associate some parameters with it. So here we'll click declare a magnitude for the alpha, which basically is just a value between zero and one. We'll declare an object selector, which lets us pick between pickup and drop offs. Uh, another object selector to select the color map. And finally, a range parameter, which allows us to select between the number of passengers in our data set. Um, and now that we've declared this class, um, uh, we can actually use it. So each of these parameters now has a certain information associated with it. We've tell told it, for example, uh, that the uh, passengers have to be between zero and 10 because we know that and taxis generally don't take more passengers than that. Um, so now that we've declared that, we can use it just like it just has no regular attributes. Uh, we can, at the class level, we can declare this parameter and that will persist on the, at the class level. But if we, for example, try to tell it that uh, we want a string of zero alpha, what we'll get is it'll tell us, no, that's actually, uh, it's meant to be a numeric value, so that's not allowed. Um, and finally, we can create an instance um, which has a different alpha value, so we can associate a particular value with an instance. And that's different from the class level default that we've set previously. Okay, so we've actually expressed a lot of intent in these parameters. We, 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 we've told it information that now any UI library can use to plot uh, some widgets. And here, um, we have some extensions for param, UI extensions for param. So first of all, param and b, uh, which actually uses IPy widgets to display uh, the parameters we just declared as a set of widgets. So here we get a slider for the alpha, we get a drop-down menu for the huge range of color maps that we have here. Uh, we have a range slider for the number of passengers, and we can pick between the pickups and drop-offs again. And so um, if we move this, the actual value is immediately reflected on the parameter of the class. Um, and IPy widgets allows us to deploy on Jupyter dashboard server, which actually, it turns out, is no longer maintained, uh, which is, was a surprise to me. So that, that's why we actually decided to write the Param Bokeh library, which is based on Bokeh widgets and works in just the same way. So previously you saw, um, I'll go back, um, you saw we just called paramb.widgets to get the set of widgets. Um, now we'll use Param Bokeh widgets and it works just in the same way. It gives us now Bokeh widgets instead of the IPy widgets. And again, we can 
the actual values are immediately reflected on our parameterized object. Okay, and Bokeh Widgets has a nice property that it's based on Bokeh, which has Bokeh Server, which we can deploy as a standalone app. And we'll see that in a little while. Okay, so now what we've done is we've loaded some data, we've plotted some data, we've declared some parameters, and now we actually want to link our parameters to the visualization we made. So again, we have our uh, NYC Taxi Explorer class, we have the parameters on it, and now we declare a method on that class uh, which actually links the two uh, aspects. So here we have access to the alpha, for example, which we set on the tiles. Um, we have access to the uh, actual column that we want to display, so pick up or drop off, and we associate, associate that with the points. Uh, we actually select the points that we want um, by, by using the select method on this points object. And finally, we use the color map to set the data shading color map. And finally, we, this, func this method will then return once again, our map tiles overlaid with the taxi trips. And so every time we call, we change a parameter and call this function, it'll reflect the parameters that we set. Okay? Um, note that this class has nothing to do with widgets. It's entirely declarative, um, and we can actually call this by hand. So we can make an instance of the NYC Taxi Explorer class. We can set the alpha and select drop off, select it to drop, call the drop, tell it to plot the drop offs and then call the makeView function, which should work if I had actually executed this. So I'll go back. Um, so if I call this now, it'll return this Holoviz object, which visualizes itself, and we get this reflecting the alpha that we set and plotting the drop-offs. Okay. We're almost there now. Now we want, to want the widgets to actually control the plot. Um, and Holovis provides this nice little object called a dynamic map, which takes a callback, um, the callback that we just declared, this make view, new, make view method, and it takes a set of streams which, which tells it to update. So every time uh, a stream value changes, the make view function is called, and it triggers an update in the plot. Um, so if we execute this now, what we get is the set of widgets from here, and we get this plot from the dynamic map. So now when I change um, a slider value, we get the plot updating. If I change the color map, we see that updating, and so on. So everything is just reflected. And again, since we have both this param and b library and uh, the param bokeh library, which works in exactly the same way, again, the only thing I changed was this uh, module, uh, we can now get the same thing using bokeh. And again, it immediately reflects what we do here. And if you notice, I've also declared a secondary stream, which is the range XY stream, which basically reflects the current viewport range of the bokeh plot. So as I zoom in, it now redraws the entire plot. Okay, so now we have, we have this whole uh, quite complex dashboard, and we want to deploy it. Um, using Fram Bokeh, we can do so really simply by just dropping this class we just made and uh, these various calls into a script file. Um, this, the widgets uh, function that we used actually um, has a mode parameter, which we can change. It would, in, in that case, it will return, if we use the server mode, it will return a bokeh document, which means we can now deploy it as a bokeh app. Um, and I'll actually switch to a slightly different app. Um, you'll remember that the title of the talk promised one billion points, and so far we've just seen 12 million. Um, so we'll actually use a different data set. Um, okay, so while that's loading, that's going to take about 30 seconds um, to load the 1 billion data points. I'll briefly talk about Jupyter Dashboard <coughs> Server. The nice properties of Jupyter Dashboard Server are the fact that it has an extension in the notebook that lets us actually lay out our widgets and plots on, on the page as preview mode to see that layout, and it has this dashboard server to deploy the whole thing. Um, but it's unmaintained. So those are nice properties that we might want to use later. Um, so at this point, this one billion data points should have loaded. This is actually a data set of um, OpenStreetMap data. Um, so this is all the GPS locations the OpenStreetMap has, has uh, collected over years, I assume. And you can see that there's a weird band here. So we've actually added a parameter here, uh, which is min count, which will filter our the plot dynamically. So as I drag this, 
you can see here on the histogram on the right, uh, that updates showing how, which, how many data points we're filtering. And we can see the plot update as well, showing us, um, yeah, showing us the various GPS locations. And you can see that even though this is now a billion data points, it's still, it's pre still pretty responsive. And that's because thanks to Dask um, and Number actually, which, which drive uh, data shader. Okay, so now that we've seen all that, where, what can we do from here? Um, so from here we can actually add Holby's, as I promised, has a wide range of different uh, types of elements that we could add. So, so far we've just seen RGB elements. Uh, if you go to the holobees.org website, you can see we have actually a wide range of different elements um, which work both in Bokeh and Mapolib. So you can see they have the exact same visual representation. Uh, what we can also do is uh, actually these Pram and B and Pram Bokeh library and Pram itself declare a wide range of different parameter types and therefore different widget types as well. And we can actually see an overview of this. Um, I'll just run that here. So here is just a class declaring a wide range of different parameters. And if I show that, uh, you can see we get uh, everything from ranges, we get text boxes, uh, which will actually allow us to declare dictionaries, for example. Uh, so I can see C9, and that will actually be reflected on the class. So if I do now do base class uh, dictionary, we'll see it actually parsed our dictionary here. Uh, we also have other things um, like dropdowns, multi-select dropdowns, uh, Boolean toggles. Uh, so really a wide range of different parameter types, and we're still working on expanding those. Uh, so what other things can we do? Um, actually. If your data is actually too big for one machine, so one billion points is just on the edge of what you can actually process on one machine. If you want to scale out to larger things, you, you might want to use DAS distributed, which will let you deploy this on, well, actually do the computation on a cluster. Okay, so finally, uh, future work. Uh, as I said, Jupyter dashboard server is not currently maintained and actually requires an older IPy widgets version. Therefore, in the future, we want to actually work with the more mature and well-supported bulky server project, but that does not yet support the kind of nice drag and drop um, features that uh, the dashboard server extension provided in the notebook. So that's something we're working towards. We, I actually released the first version of Prime Bokeh this morning, um, so it, needs, it still needs some polish, but it's, it's getting there, and it's uh, soon gonna be ready for widespread use. Um, but so far, Prime and B is still a bit more mature. Um, and then finally, we want to provide some more flexible layouts for both Prem and B and Prem Bokeh. Um, so please uh, let us know what you think of these tools, what you want out of these tools. Um, we're still very much developing them. And if you have uh, questions, join us on our GitHub channel or file issues at the Holoviews GitHub channel, actually, um, or file issues on the various projects. Um, so thanks, everyone. Um, any questions?